Welcome to the Position Markers for Digital Applications on Construction Sites, Structural Monitoring and BIM Applications Instruction. If you are here, meaning we have already grasped your attention a bit. Let's go for more and see what and how we can make use of this new marker standard. But first of all, let's see what we will be talking about in this instruction. Firstly, we get to know a bit about motivation. What is the idea behind and why does it become useful, if we make use of it? Then we will be covering how to use it in the application of markers. Data storage and readout tag in terms of QR code will also be described. After that, we will show you how different trades can interact and make use of the marker. Finally, the benefits of using this marker will be mentioned as well. So, let's deep dive into it. Surveyors capture geometric data on construction sites to check if elements are at the right position. They supervise the geometric quality of walls, columns, and installations in general. This precise data can be very useful for other trades that are on site nowadays. Like laser scans, again for quality checks or robots and drones for data capture. But also new devices like AR and VR tools are more and more common on construction sites. They rely on precise position data. Usually what they do is requesting another surveyor measurement for their specific type of marker. The question is that why are we not using the measured data from surveyors that might have already been captured maybe weeks before? This is the idea behind to reduce complexity, workload, and make data easily available to everyone involved on the construction sites. Doesn't this sound better? Then let's move on to the basic steps that should be performed to follow the CWA pre-standard. The markers contain typically two crosshairs and a spatial grid with size 25 millimeters. Different sizes of markers are possible, but a crosshair distance of 150 millimeters is recommended. The marker must provide a human readable identification number. Users are free to do that in the form they are used to, but we recommend three or four digits numerical values. In some cases, the markers might have to be applied onto the floors or ceilings. If so, we recommend to use markers with three crosshairs. Therefore, the first step that should be done is to apply the markers to the desired places in a construction site. Second, measure them like you would have done with traditional markers. Step three, once completing the measurement, Transforming raw data to an easily understandable file, such as JSON or Excel file, is required such that this data can be put onto the server or generated for QR codes. Step 4 is providing the generated QR codes containing the link to access the measured data corresponding to the markers. Last step is to let other parties or trades involved stick their markers on the guideline spatial grid provided to align their markers with our standard markers, such that they know where their markers have been placed by looking at the information of the crosshairs provided within the QR codes. Now, let's assume that we were a user who wanted to make use of this standard. After we stuck our special type of marker and knew the standard marker position through the QR code, we might have to do some calculations to get the position of the desired spots on our proprietary markers used by our robot, drone, or laser scanner. Here is an example of using a black and white marker with our standard marker. Once we obtain the standard marker positions through the QR code, we can then put the data into our specific calculation sheet. In this case, the positions of black and white markers used by laser scanner are calculated. After that we can export it as a text file and put it into the laser scanner software. The software can then align the point clouds to the positions given automatically. By doing this, our point clouds will be aligned in a correct coordinate and can be compared to the BIM model consequently. Another example is with a drone. Like laser scanners, drones also require a specific type of marker used to align their point clouds. This depends on the photogrammetric software, or the technique used to generate the point clouds. After obtaining the data from QR code, we can then calculate the positions of our specific markers by doing some calculations. In this case, 
we calculate the positions of the four corners of the specific markers based on the data from our standard markers. After that we can run the photogrammetric software to generate point clouds in a correct frame, or to be more precise, in an IFC frame or the same coordinate used in the construction site. Now let's summarize the good things you might have by using this marker. First, you get a clear naming convention for surveyor data and it's also available to others. You can have data storage centralized on the project server. Possibilities of associated information to specific types of markers, for instance, robot and drone, they have their own patterns of markers to recognize. And lastly, it's easy to read out the data via QR codes presented on site. Isn't that easy? Why stay in a conventional way? Let's change to something new and easier for others to access and reduce complexity in construction sites together.